All right, so there's some technical difficulties, but basically Tony was invited because he he uh, has a soft spot for animals. He doesn't believe in eating them. Um, my dog will not shut up. Uh, his name's Bruce, by the way. Named after Bruce Campbell. Um, not Springsteen. Not Springsteen, also not Bruce Lee, although he's sometimes called Bruce Leroy. And uh, without further ado, let's launch into the show. Uh, so, Tony, you remember Bill Nye? I do remember Bill Nye. Like, when, when, when you think, well, what do you think of? Like, you think of, like, creepy dude and that, like, science? I mean, wh- wh- what is the, the memory that comes to you? Mm, uh, yeah, science stuff in, like, elementary <laughs> school. And then lately he has been a, uh, you know been a bit of a more of a tv personality talking about the march for science and all that stuff well you're much more learned than i am i have no idea he's doing any of this stuff i do know he's a science communicator that's just somebody who's like not good enough at science so they talk on tv about science i'm just kidding neil degrasse tyson's amazing Uh, i'm i'm dead serious he's like the carl sagan of our time bill nye on the other hand uh has said some strange things um i'm just gonna launch into this Bill Nye has a new show, Bill Nye Saves the World. A little egotistical, I don't know. <laughs> that's uh, that's to be dis- determined if Bill Nye can save the world. I mean, it should be more like Kanye or somebody that actually can save the world. But I digress. Lil Wayne. Um, he said, should we have policies that penalize people for having extra kids in a developed world? He asked that question on his show. And... This was about population control, and basically that if you have a kid and you're in a developed country, that kid's going to produce 160 times more carbon emissions than a kid that's born who's, what do you say, Nigerian? Mm -hmm. That would be Niger. Uh, He purposely picked Niger instead of like Congo. Is Congo a country? I I don't remember. Um, Yeah, I, I probably do sound like Sarah Palin. I'm sorry. It's my intellectualism is uh, lacking, but I, I just I'm just trying to figure it out. He asked that question, which means that you know he's trying to launch that into a debate. Well, how do you feel about that, Tony? You know, somebody who doesn't have any children that you know of. Um, I like to caveat that, you know. Nah, no children. I don't want this to be incorrect 10 years from now. Uh, but you don't have any kids. Do you think it would be good to penalize people from having kids right now? Uh, no. Because I of... I don't think so. Okay. Not not for reasons of climate change. I think that um, you know there are more effective ways of minimizing the impact of uh, humans on the environment through improving technologies or just increasing our awareness of our carbon footprints rather than limiting uh, the children that might one day you know, be responsible for developing some of these technologies that will eventually uh, decrease our emissions. So what you're saying is you're not a... Let me just get this straight. You're not a climate change denier. No. I mean, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm just willing to... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't... I thought it was ironic that the March for Climate Change in, De- in what was it, Denver was canceled for snow just the other day. It is May. But I am smart enough to know that climate change does not mean that it can't snow in the May. It means that the climate's ridiculous and strange things will happen. Um, so, so I get it. So, so what you're saying is why would we prevent the child who will invent the answer to our energy woes? Why are we killing Einstein? Should be like the next, uh, what Bill O'Reilly book, killing Einstein. Be a good one. Um, you know, he's probably not doing anything. (laughs) Maybe I could have him he, as a guest. He has a podcast now. I does he have a podcast I now? So. Oh. <laughs> I bet it's really weird. He probably does it naked. <laughs> um, I don't know why I said that again. That's weird. Uh, but more importantly, back to the uh, the show, is if you kill the baby that is going to solve the world problems, then 
he really didn't do any good. So the, there was a guest on there. He's a, a bioethicist from Johns Hopkins, and apparently that's a job. You're more learned than I, having your international studies uh, background, which has nothing to do with bioethics. But I'm just asking, what does that even mean? I don't, I don't know. I mean... Presumably, something to do with the ethics of bio, biology. Yeah. <laughs> bio and ethics. Um, all right, anyway, the, the guy is a bioethicist. He was like, yeah, it'd be a great idea to basically uh, prevent people from having kids. And then he talked about his own kids and how much of a waste they are to the world. Uh, something along the lines of his kids are going to pollute the world and, you know, create like 60 metric tons of waste. Now, I have a solution. I don't think it's a popular solution. And it doesn't involve murdering children. Uh, I was thinking we should have a poll. Maybe we could ask if it's a good idea. And those that say yes, we should ask them to commit suicide politely. Would that would that be extreme or is that? It's maybe a bit extreme. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of selfish though to ask somebody else's kid to die or not be born, because I mean, Bill Nye is obviously creating a big carbon footprint. I I just don't get it. I think the bioethics of that is the that I don't know. It just it bothers me. And he was supposed to be somebody who was like instrumental in our in our youth and now he hates kids it, it concerns me but but i'm gonna move on to an even more important topic this one um transgresses generations uh it's been a a key issue since probably like the time of jesus um is white rice what was that peaches <laughs> you don't eat what you don't think it was around during the time of jesus i don't think that was an issue <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to actually get back to that thing about Jesus because it's important. But is white rice better than brown rice? Like, as in, is it healthier? I mean, it's obviously better. Who eats, like, you know, shrimp fried rice with brown rice? People do that. That's a thing. <laughs> Whatever. Tony, what, you're an avid brown rice eater. What, why do you eat brown rice? And don't say because it tastes good. <laughs> I I was told that brown rice was a healthier alternative to white rice because it has, you know, these micronutrients in the shell or whatever that are yeah. stripped away. Oh, are, exactly. Are lost in, in white rice. Yeah. Well, there are micronutrients and they're inside this like, it's like a, I'm not going to say that. This is a family show. It's, <laughs> it's, it's basically... The micronutrients are packed into this like latex sleeve and on the outside of the sleeve is like fecal matter. Does that make sense? Like, Why is it latex? So like it doesn't, it just made more sense. I didn't know what else to use. Um, sheepskin. And so you have this sheepskin bladder and inside of it has all these nutrients. But on the outside they dipped it in fecal matter. And that is really the image that you should think of when you're eating brown rice. Because when you eat brown rice, there are these things called anti-nutrients. Because they leave the, uh, the husk or something like that on there. And these anti-nutrients actually do this really weird thing. They reject the absorption of certain key nutrients, the macronutrients. Which is the whole reason people eat brown rice. Because it has all these great things. It was either micro or macro. I honestly don't know. But I'm not as uh, well learned as Tony. Um... And another terrible thing it does, especially to somebody with celiac disease, which, you know, I'm, I'm allergic. I'm not really allergic to wheat, but I have celiac disease and I can't have wheat, similar to how, like, Tony's allergic to meat. Yeah. Um, the It irritates the bowels. Um, I don't eat brown rice, so I really don't know. But apparently I would, I would feel it. Um, so, so you pack this sheepskin bladder surrounded with fecal matter and you feed it to somebody, it's probably going to make them not healthy. That's the equivalent of brown rice. That is what you're doing to yourself. I, I didn't know. I feel... You didn't know. Okay. 
I don't know if it's exactly like that because, <laughs> again, it's, it's kind of gross to think about. But there was a it, it was OK. So blowing my mind, I'm just telling you all this stuff because mm-hmm. I just learned it yesterday. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm unpacking it. But I found two camps. There's the Whole Foods camp, which you, you, you go to Trader Joe's, right? I do. That's kind of like a That's Whole, Whole Foods, Foods for like people yeah. that actually don't like to waste their whole paycheck. You get that? Like yeah. Whole paycheck. That, that's kind of a cheesy nickname. but and Not not sponsored by Trader Joe's. Not sponsored by Trader Joe's. Wait, we're not sponsored by Trader Joe's? I don't know. Are you sponsored? I wasn't aware of it. They got two buck chucks still, right? <laughs> that's know. the wine that only cost $2 because the guy didn't yeah, want to. Oh, he raised the price? Yeah. Oh, because apparently his like ex-wife was a part of it, and he didn't want her to have any profits. So, anyway, um, sorry, got thank you, Peaches. the The thing is, is that there are two camps. There's the Whole Foods camp, and then there's the super buff people camp. You know, the one where it's like the, hey, I'm super healthy and I work out all the time, and my glutes are. I don't know why I always go to butts. <laughs> I mean, what does that have to do with a butt? But anyway, they were like, white rice is good for you. The the muscle people, if they they said if you're gonna have rice, rice white rice isn't bad for you. It's actually a great alternative. And then um, the the Whole Foods people don't even carry white rice at their stores, and they tell you that you're a bad person if you eat right white rice. Kind of reminds me of how people judge Trump voters. I don't. I don't think you are a, a bad person if you eat white rice. I respect your choices. Thank you. In the world of rice, it's just remember that everybody who eats white rice isn't uh, an alt right person, and doesn't um, partake in white supremacy. Um, so, white rice actually helps you absorb the nutrients. So instead of this sheepskin bladder with the poo on it, it's really got like a magnet for nutrients it's actually a, an empty vessel because there's nothing good inside of white rice but what it does is it it sticks to all the good stuff so think of like a superfood mm-hmm. like um like steak mm-hmm. i mean what's a superfood that vegans eat or vegetarians like avocados avocados do you eat avocados <laughs> well i mean it's more important to him, okay? okay? He doesn't survive without avocados from Mexico. I don't think um, they're all from Mexico. Then why are they called avocados? Exactly. <laughs> so the, these uh, avocados, do people put avocados and mix them with rice? Uh, in the form of guacamole. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, guacamole is made of avocado. Oh, and you would get chipotle. Yes. Do you get the brown rice bowl? I do get brown rice. Yeah, you got to get the white rice bowl, even if it tastes like crap. Because it'll help with the yeah, it'll avocado. help. Yeah, and it won't uh, irritate your bowels. Um, You're very into that. Yeah, it's two episodes in a row. I gotta stop this. But no, uh, so you go to Chipotle, you get the white rice now, and you 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 get the avocado. I mean the guacamole. Uh-huh. See how I say that in Spanish? It's not guacamole, it's guacamole. Mm-hmm. I mean, not really, but... I was like, Can you that pronounce that for that us, Peaches? Say, no. <laughs> no, you can't pronounce it. She doesn't know Spanish either, apparently. Um, however, I'm just letting you guys know the word mango is really mango. Um, so, so you mix the rice with the guacamole. You get a superfood in there. You mix it all up. You obviously don't put meat in it. You put black beans... Black beans? Black beans, because they uh, have a lot of fiber mm-hmm. uh, and have at it. Now, another thing you should be concerned about with brown rice is it's uh, high in arsenic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with arsenic, but I, it can I did kill. take chemistry. Yeah, it can kill you. Yeah. Um, have you ever felt like you've had too much? Arsenic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't say, can't say that I have, but I'll be on the lookout. Yeah, it's usually it's like you feel like you're dying, um, start sweating a lot, shaking, and I'm pretty sure your brain shuts down. If that ever happens, uh, stop eating brown rice immediately. Okay. Uh, also, public health announcement. Yeah. Well, another thing, and I and I know people might be wondering where I'm getting with all this. Nowhere, but 
Um, make sure you rinse your brown rice. I mean, if you're going to eat the sheepskin, poo-covered, you know, nutrient-dense food, you should rinse, you should rinse it to get the poo out. No, I meant white rice as well. Oh, you, yeah. Peaches says you should rinse white rice as well. I can't even rinse say Rinse all white rice. rice. Yeah. So, rinse it before you mince it. You don't mince it. In your mouth. Yeah, in your mouth. I forgot something though. There are, I don't know. I mean, I only know, I have like six listeners that are guaranteed. I mean, I'm, I'm recruiting listeners. It's kind of weird. Like I have to ask people to listen to this, but that's beside the point. Um, I mean, t- there were a lot of people that wanted to be on the show, but listeners I'm working on. The point I was trying to make was if you have diabetes, uh, rice might not be good for you. Uh, do you have diabetes? I do Donna? not. You do not. Um, is your BMI? What's your BMI? I don't know. You don't know? Let, let's just get like a, what are you, like 160 pounds, 140 pounds? 140 pounds-ish. That's terrible. I mean, what do you eat? Oh, I, you're a vegetarian. You don't get the food that you need. Right. It's the nutrients because of the brown, the rice. brown rice. It's, it's, it's blocking. It yeah, makes sense. blocking your bowels. It's blocking your nutrients. It's like you're giving yourself celiac without even having it. Yep. Man, I think we just changed your life. Um, Certainly my Chipotle order. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's huge. Myself, I'm obese. I mean, I might not look like it, but I'm obese. I don't have diabetes. But um, I'm talking about type 2 primarily because type 1 people, obviously, it's like genetic or something. That's the one, the juvenile, right? The one where you kind of just find out you have diabetes because your body is hates you. Not <laughs> That's the one a medical where, reason, but well, I mean, like your body hates you without cause. The other ones, like your body hates you because you're treating it like crap. Uh, maybe, but probably. I mean, celiac is similar to type one. I mean, it's way better. I mean, I can eat sugar or something, but you know, your body hates you. That's basically how I think of autoimmune disorders, like like AIDS. You know. <laughs> By the way, diabetes and, uh, well, diabetes and uh, celiac are just like, they're, they're in the same family as AIDS. They're just not as bad. Um, but that, don't worry about it. I'll cover that in another episode. Um, so now you know, don't, uh, don't eat brown rice. Or if you do, rinse it before you eat it. Um, so does rinsing it get rid of the anti-nutrients? I have no idea. I, I don't even know what people do. Like, what do you do? You just like, how long do you rinse it? I think three hours. I don't know. I don't think they would rinse it, but they soak it for three hours. Oh, that's soak it for three hours. I thought you were wasting three hours worth of water so my California listeners would have to, like, not do it. They just can't eat brown rice then. So, um, that that's good. I'm, I'm happy to hear. Uh, have you ever called into a radio show? I did once in oh, Colorado about what? baseball. Baseball. Wait, you're a baseball fan? I am a baseball we fan. We might just totally skip the... A Rockies, Rockies fan. That was that, was that. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you think of opening day this year? Opening day? I'm testing your knowledge. <laughs> I don't live in Colorado anymore, but you don't I'm, pay sure, attention. I'm sure it was great. It they, was great because they, beat, uh, better than, they uh, beat the Brewers on opening day. Yeah, they're doing better than people thought they would, which is always good, right? Better to exceed expectations. They're better than who we thought they were. Thank uh, rest in peace, Denny Green. Um, but yeah, the Rockies are doing really well. But you called into a baseball show and mm-hmm. you talked about how I complained about uh, their bullpen. I think their bullpen, <laughs> which is a, a chronic chronic issue in in Coors Field. Well, I mean, it's hard to pitch when the air is really light. Uh, I'm just letting you know, not from personal experience, but science. Uh, <laughs> you might not be aware. That's why we have the humidor now. Also, keep our keep the balls nice and you know it's, moist. See, we're always talking about balls <laughs> and moist. Didn't we have that well, last time? No. <laughs> no, there's something about balls last episode. The oh, the I women in the balls. The women in the balls. Yeah. The yeah, they were they were so talented in the balls. The I mean, acrobats. yeah, the acrobats in the balls. I can't stop saying balls. Sorry. Um, but back to the baseball. Yes, Colorado's bullpen's probably terrible. People don't care about that because it's baseball and there's only like 
for people that like baseball, me included. By the way, full disclosure, I play a text-based baseball game with uh, with a bunch of people that have like mental disorders because they play text-based baseball with me. Do you want to give and, a shout out to your team? Uh, yeah, the Fake Pirates. Fake Pirates, uh, first place ahead of the uh, Fake Reds and the Fake uh, Cardinals. The Fake Brewers, by the way, are shitty this. I mean, bad this year. Sorry, no cussing. Um, oh, there's. I have to actually ask you about this. There's this guy. His name's Blankenship. I hope he never listens to this. If I become popular enough, I'm pretty sure he won't listen to episode two because the production quality is probably terrible. But Blankenship, let me just give you a little background. There's a commissioner for this text-based baseball league. And and, and when I say text-based, I mean, think Microsoft Excel Mm -hmm. and computer-generated pictures of fake people. Mm -hmm. Really exciting. Very exciting. Um, My my number one pitcher is... uh, Claudio Swish Gonzalez. Don't ask me. I don't even know. Um, he's but he's not. A, he's really not a real person. Uh, he's, not, su- we know him. he's supposedly born in like 2007. Yeah. He's a good number. He'd be 10 years old today. Um, so, anyway, back to my point. Blankenship has a brother. Supposedly, we communicate in Slack with the whole league. He will post a trade, and he'll be like. I need a starting pitcher ASAP. And then two minutes later, his brother will log in and be like, ha, 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 I need to trade away a starting pitcher. And mind you, each of them have two teams. I think Blankenship is really his brother as well. Do you think it's kind of weird that somebody would go out of their way to play as another person in a fake baseball league? In a fake baseball league? I mean, does that sound like... Is it a money league? No. Not at all. (laughs) Then yes. It is stupid. It is... I I sit there and I I just click on stats. Like, I I just got... I just got to... I get email updates. Mm -hmm. So so I get the box scores emailed to my, you know, my personal email. And we played five games last week. I mean, like, Mm -hmm. this is what it comes across as. And it told me that Carlos Ruiz Jr. got four home runs. By the way, he's a beast. He's also not real. Um, and, I mean, these are the things that we do. We do this. He does this for four teams because he's probably his brother. <laughs> he's the same person. Yeah. I, I mean, is there an is that ethical? I mean, what do you think the bioethicist would say? I don't know that he would understand. He probably wouldn't. He's probably too busy trying to figure out ways to kill children. Um, this is a family show. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not about killing children. Uh, I don't know how to transition. Oh, I called a radio station. That's why I was yes. asking you about that because I called a radio station. I was I have Sirius XM radio. I'm kind of bougie. Um, you know, I don't know if everybody, you know, there's satellite radio, and uh, I listened to four channels. Um, Sirius XM chill because mm-hmm. you got to get your tech now. Yep. Is that even tech now? EDM. EDM, electronic dance music, yes. is techno, right? Uh, no. Like, oomph, oomph, oomph. I think there's like, variations, dubstep, like a spectrum. Trap. A spectrum, dubstep. like... Uh, there's a whole bunch of... How do you not know this? No, I just, I mean, I like it. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to draw a picture, but I like art. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know the difference between oil and uh, plastic. Acrylic. You Acrylic's just, you a plastic. Got it. There you go. Acrylic's you a plastic, right? Difference. No, I mean, like when I look at them, like, right. I'd be like, "Is that watercolor or is that uh, crayon?" Okay. Anyway, I, I was being serious. <laughs> I feel like you're mocking me. Um, so. So chill. Yeah, chill. Chill's one. Um, POTUS Radio, the politics of the United States. I listen to Smirconish. It's weird. I don't know. Just down the middle. I listen to Breitbart Radio. Oh, I listen to five. Sorry. Breitbart Radio. Get some uh, really good, uh, interesting news there. Mm -hmm. I listen to Urban View. Um, I'm from the city myself. Very urban. Is this the city? Uh, No, 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 no. I'm from (laughs) Milwaukee. Okay. You know. Just wanted to be clear. And I'm actually from Milwaukee. I'm not a 
suburbanite. I'm a Milwaukee born and raised. Don't do it. <laughs> I was not going to say I'm the playground I spent most of my days because I didn't. You did. You just did. Wait, I did spend a lot of time on the playground? Oh, my gosh. Never mind. Um, so we're on Breitbart, uh, Urban View. And now my new favorite. It's called Progress Radio. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've never heard... Like, I've never listened to a radio station and changed the channel within 30 seconds because it just made me angry. They're so good at this. Um, so that's actually the radio that's station. Your favorite. Well, yeah, because it like challenges my tolerance. Mm. Um, and it tol so judging by the name, I'm guessing it challenges your tolerance from the left. Yes, yes, exactly. Challenges your tolerance. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, uh, well, I mean, the reason I can tolerate Breitbart is because it's like listening to interesting conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a there's something to be said about the creativity of, you know, the what's his name is his dad being the, the serial killer. Uh, know, Ted Cruz's Ted Cruz. dad being the the sh whatever the the Unabomber or something like that. Yeah, I thought he killed involved in killing Kennedy or something. Yeah, he killed Kennedy. Something about uh, Bill Alleg O'Reilly. Allegedly, We're, we yeah, don't, I, we don't. But I mean, you can listen to that for like days on end. I mean, that's it's just so attractive. I, I love that kind of uh, that message. Um, Urban View is actually kind of boring. I mean, I was I was actually in agreement with a lot of things. And then I got to Progress Radio. And it was so weird because they were bashing Trump. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm not surprised. It's Progress Radio. And then it got really weird. And I mean by really weird, they started talking in a way, and this is a family show, but I'm quoting people, so it's okay. They said, and this is the host of the, and I'm going to repeat it just so that you guys know, make it plain with Mark Thompson. And and in hashtag terms, like hashtag language, you know, like with the, the number sign. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, it says get woke. Now, I am pretty woke. It's in the morning when I'm listening to this. So I'm, I'm, I'm awake, I'm driving, I'm woke, I'm listening to Progress Radio. And then all of a sudden they start talking about the Donald and his daughter, and then they start saying that he started, and he started pimping his daughter. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? I'm like listening more intently. He's like, yeah, Donald Trump's pimping his daughter, pimping his daughter in the White House. He's pimping her, and she's prostituting, and it, she's just a prostitute. Donald Trump's a pimp. And Milan, no, not Melania. Oh, she's a prostitute too. Oh wait, what was Ivanka? He just kept calling her a prostitute. And I was like, what is this? Like, if you heard that, would you think that is somehow, like, creative? I mean, what is that? Uh, is would, that progressive? <laughs> I would uh, question if they were using it as a, some kind of rhetorical device to, to, and to mean something else, like a, like a surrogate or, or something like that. So, like, they weren't talking about... An actual prostitute. So that you think they were... Like, they're using the term... Pimping and prostituting in a way that is about actually pimping and prostituting? No, that is about uh, in some sort of political context. But I have not listened to uh, Progress okay, Radio, well, so I don't want to... Unfortunately, I do not have the recording, nor do I know if it's legal. However, I'm pretty sure none of my listeners would report me for a copyright infringement. Although I almost got on the radio station, so I wonder if I would have been talking if it would have like you know been legit. So you called into Progress Radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's actually the point of this whole thing. Um, so I called into Progress Radio, and I was like, I am concerned that you're not speaking to, and I, I didn't talk like this, but it, it sounds more legit, again, legit, um, that you're not speaking to prog progressive values when you're talking about prostituting and pimping regarding the president. I, I, I know that you don't think he's legitimate, but I just do not think it's appropriate. I don't think it advances any message. It just makes you look petty and also vulgar and just frankly unprofessional. And then the woman was like, you're really calling me about that? We had 30 minutes of the show and we had like one minute where we said that and you're just going to do that? And I was like, well, well, yeah. I mean, you were talking about feminism like three minutes ago. And now you're accusing some woman of being a prostitute? 
I mean, that's that, that just seems insane. So it's, you know, it's feminism for the women that you like. But then when a woman does something that you don't like, oh, she can't do that. That's not fair. I don't, I, she's a prostitute. It just didn't seem right. Like, it seemed very, you know, just petty. Hmm. And they, But they didn't put you on the air. Well, they put me on hold and they made me listen to the show. Uh. Their hold voice was me listening to that stupid woman <laughs> keep talking about prostitutes. Not just the woman, it was the dude, too. The dude's show, the woman was kind of like backing him up or something. It was just so weird. And I had to listen to it in my ear and I was... It was about, not really in my ears, on my Bluetooth. Remember, I'm bougie. Um, and it, it went on for maybe like five minutes. And I just, I had to switch. I, I just had to turn it off. And I actually called Peaches right after. And she told me, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you calling shows? <laughs> you know, and it, it doesn't matter. So that was my experience with Progress Radio. It wasn't very progressive. So are you going back to it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, cause there's a show at nine o'clock and they play like a fake clapping noise mm-hmm. cause they think they're funny. Okay. And like a laugh track kind of thing. Yeah. And they, they have a person who pretends to talk like Donald Trump mm. and he's not funny. It's just a really bad show and okay. it's worse than this one. Okay. You know, and then that's why it's impressive. Um, so obviously I'm going to delve into something you're probably more familiar with. Um, I had some, uh, requests, uh, to ask you some more personal questions. Oh, okay. Uh, some of your tenants have called you a slumlord. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you own these, uh, I'm going to say terrible housing units. <laughs> I have, I have a house that I live in also. Yeah, oh, you live in it as well. And rent the top floor to... Oh, of course, the top floor. You rent the penthouse, right? Yes. Oh, wait, no, no, no. You rent it to them. Yes. Oh, you live... I rent the top floor to them. Oh, what about the bottom floor? I I live in the basement. You live in a basement? So you live in squalor while they live in... I live in my own basement. Right. That's that's good to point out. They call you a slumlord. Yes. So are you saying they're being disingenuous? Yes. Do you charge them a fair rate? I think so. It's below what we were paying for our uh, three-bedroom apartment. Yeah, I mean that's that's actually pretty good. I I'd probably just, you know, I, we we know who it has to be, seeing as though there's only two of them. Yes. So these questions are obviously coming from one of them. Mm-hmm. Probably difficult to figure out which. <laughs> um, there there was something though that did concern me. There's a bird feeder. There, there is a bird so what's feeder. what's the deal with the bird feeder? I have, well, you know, we have uh, our, our my house above some pine trees, and uh, you know, I, I occasionally see blue jays back there. And blue jays, you're you're a big fan of birds. Are you like a John James Audubon of like today? No, I, I support I support the Audubon club, so but you, I'm not a. You don't draw the pictures. No, I don't draw the pictures, you, and I'm not just... that familiar. I can't replicate the calls or anything, but I like I like blue jays. I was going to try to do it, but I didn't know if it would sound right on here. Mm-hmm. I haven't upgraded the uh, sound audio. Like the, the, we don't have like a sound room. Right. We don't have an audio switchboard. At 100 listeners, though. Right? Yeah, at 100 listeners, we're going to get that. Um, unique listeners. I can check. Can you check? Maybe. <laughs> um, Cut that. But, yeah. So you listen to the bird calls. You, you, you kind of like a Dr. Doolittle. Sure. Without talking. Without talking. Someone who's interested in animals, yes. But doesn't eat them. Yes. Um, yet, what about the squirrel? Well, there's a, there is a fat squirrel. <laughs> I yes. Believe, I believe he's affectionately known as. I have it actually in my notes as the fat the squirrel. The fat squirrel. Who okay. um, is eating out of the bird feeder. And it's not a squirrel feeder. It's a bird feeder. Is there a sign that says no squirrels? There's not, but seeing as squirrels can't read, that seems that seems not kind of uh, kind of mean uh, to judge a squirrel's reading ability. But continue. So you say that the squirrel is eating the bird feed. Mm-hmm. Then why don't you just put it higher? Well, he it's it's not a matter of it being higher. He climbs down the tree and sort of like 
So he's, does like a tra- a, he's like a circus girl. Yes, yeah, like a trapeze, you know, you hangs down and wait, then eats out of the bird feeder. You don't like the circus. I, I don't approve of the way circuses treat Yeah, treat you animals. have a trapeze squirrel. I, there is a trapeze squirrel. So you're compelling this, life. you're putting this in a position where he has to do dangerous stunts to get fed. Well, he can get fed other ways that don't involve eating the oh. bird feed out of my bird feeder. Okay, so you're, you're, you actually feel like he's oppressing these birds. And you place a higher importance on the birds compared to the squirrel. Yes. Who you think is lesser than. Yes. Awesome. Even though you're also a mammal. Yes. All right. Um, well, would you advocate, if he kept doing this, would you kill the squirrel? I would Are you not thinking, personally Have you thought about it? Um, no, I have not. Have you thought about hiring a squirrel pest remover? I Well, yes, because he also climbs up on the roof and uh, is, like, scratching up there. And I'm... So you want to kill the squirrel. I just want the squirrel out of my no, life. No, no, you... <laughs> You know what this means. The squirrel out of your life, they're not going to relocate him to a happy home. You don't know that. It's probably not going to happen. We need to come to the reality that you're advocating for this squirrel's death. <laughs> we came up with a solution. I, we, the, the royal we. <laughs> the you. <laughs> it's really just me. Peaches, you want to join in before I say this? How about... There's another person... Uh, that actually told me this, but I'm going to just claim it as my own idea. Um, you could hunt the squirrel. Mm-hmm. However, the stipulation is you must eat it. <laughs> I believe you're talking about one of my roommates who uh, yes. advocated this. Yes. Um, uh, you hunt the squirrel in the spirit of gaming and uh, population control, saving the disease spreading of squirrel germs to birds Mm -hmm. um you hunt the squirrel he's fat so he probably tastes good Mm -hmm. um i mean i don't know i it's It's like like a southern thing like like who eats squirrel like every single person i know from the south is like yeah oh some squirrel before and then i'm like (laughs) like seriously who who eats squirrel um but did did that come out of southern and i just sound like i had like marbles in my mouth (laughs) like a gurgly noise a gurgly noise I love my southern accent. It's terrible. Um, but but it, if you eat the squirrel, like, how would you eat it? I would not eat the squirrel. I have, oh, so I have you would... taken down the bird, the bird feeder so, for so now let me, until I can... So let me get this straight. You would hunt the squirrel. You'd advocate for its death, but you would not, as um, many cultures, including Native American cultures, would do, which is to utilize the whole animal. <laughs> I'm not advocating for the death of the fat squirrel. I just want him to go away. You Leave could probably make some moccasins or some like shoes out of the squirrel hide. You could um, maybe make a necklace out of the uh, squirrel pouch. Just um, coming from someone who doesn't hunt. <laughs> yeah. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, I've never killed an animal that wasn't a an insect. Mm. I'm just letting you guys know. I'm. So I'm more of an animal rights person than you. I mean, I've I've eaten animals, so I guess that's different. But yeah, um, they were already dead. They were already dead. You're killing them with supply and demand. Supply and demand? No, it's kind of like uh, buying from a a dog from a breeder. Mm. You know, I don't want it to go to a rescue. Okay, fair play. So I would rather buy a dog from a breeder instead of rescue it from a breeder, because you know, I'm supporting the economy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> the the economy of slum dog breeders. Um, so so I think you should eat the squirrel. Okay. Um, I will take that under advisement. I heard squirrel brain is very tasty. Uh, small. Um, back to animals though. So so what is going to happen to the circus animals? Where are they going to go? Um. Sanctuaries is a sanctuary, huh? Yeah. Great segue. You're familiar with the Colorado story, right? I am. In your hometown of Colorado, which is Colorado, um, <laughs> it's just one giant town. And you know, like, if you're from Colorado, you know every place in Colorado. Right. Uh, there was a a tragic event 
the government forced. <laughs> I'm going to take the side of the people that did it because it's <laughs> no it's fun to convenient. actually think they're just evil. But imagine if you've never heard about if you've never heard about this, just take my word for it. But if you've read about it, forget what you learned <laughs> and just believe me. These people were forced to euthanize three tigers, three lions, five bears. Uh-huh. Uh, because the government um, wouldn't allow them to move their animals to a different sanctuary. Mm-hmm. I'm really just distorting the facts, but <laughs> but if these animals are getting killed, what ha- what is going to happen to those circus animals now that they're out of a job? Well, I should clarify, in the Colorado story, <clears throat> the there is another sanctuary that had offered to take the animals if they couldn't house them anymore. Um, but, you know, assuming... If we assume your point's correct that there isn't room in these sanctuaries, yeah, there isn't. There's no room. Um, you know, it's obviously a problematic issue, and there's not really a good solution. But just because there isn't a place to put the animals doesn't justify the treatment of the animals in the circus. I mean, we're talking about jobs for these animals, though. <laughs> Are like we? They, they... <laughs> You're taking away good American jobs from animals. No, I I was just wondering, like, is there a problem with sanctuaries? I'm not advocating for uh, animal abuse or anything like that. So if these people just euthanize these animals because they wanted to, you know, save a few bucks, I have no idea. Um, That's pretty messed up. But is there a problem of of population control, uh, things like that, where we just don't have any room for it. If we don't have use for an animal, do we really have room for the animal? And if the sanctuaries are full, that basically means we can only have X amount of animals before we just euthanize them, similar to dogs that we find on the side of the road or or the cat population. Which, by the way, in Oahu, there's so many cats. I just wanted to let you know. We rescued two of them. Um, right? And one of them died of feline leukemia. Rest in peace, Rufus. So so you're are you concerned that there's not maybe a push to expand sanctuaries or um, um I think there should be uh yeah, I think there should be a push for it. I don't know the economics for it. Um but also I think you need to at the same time try to combat some of the sources of why we need the sanctuaries in the first place. Right, like people animals. just randomly buying a lion right. and then... having them as pets or, you yeah. know... Um... It's probably not a good pet. Right. I mean, it seems pretty pretty wild. By the way, foxes are apparently pets now. They're domesticating them. In Russia. Um, no, I thought they are doing it here. No, they're, they're pets. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Peaches says they're pets. Uh, we're not buying one. I didn't say we are Oh, I thought you just said we can buy one. Oh, I thought whenever you say you can buy one, you're saying you can buy one, like, I want one. No, I said you have the ability to buy one. So you want one? No. Good. I don't know me either. Um, so, so stop the source. Stop the uh, irresponsibility of people. Um, what if we built a wall around Wyoming Mm -hmm. and kicked everybody out. Mm -hmm. There's like 300,000 people. Half of them are, you know, probably willing to move to Colorado. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll give them free marijuana. Um, uh, You build a wall around Wyoming, you put all those animals there. Mm -hmm. Let them roam. Mm -hmm. Like the buffalo. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, well, the part of the problem with the, um, animals that they put in sanctuaries is that they can't be released back into the wild because they don't have the proper, you know, predatory instincts or, uh, behaviors, which is why they end up in places like sanctuaries rather than re-released. Is that like, uh, I mean, you obviously own your own home. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. In your twenties, have your own home by your own volition, by the way, not, uh, this was not like. Tony was given all this money to buy a home. He is a hard worker. Um, he's a postal worker. He's really not. But that's beside the point. Um, I actually love the post office. Except they lost my mom's birthday card. 
And I'm still upset about it. But anyway, Tony's a hard worker, owns his own home. Where was I going with that? Oh, wait. These people that never move out of their mom's house. Mm -hmm. Can we put them in the wild? (laughs) I don't. I mean, is that the the same kind of idea? Like, we need like a basement dweller sanctuary? I, I don't know. You know, once mom and dad move on to the netherworld, because they're never going to move out of the basement. Are we going to need to have, like, you know, in-house care for these people because they don't have any, like, life skills? Life skills? I don't know. I thought I you might not. know. Did, did you rescue a couple of these? Are you roommates, <laughs> the these type dwellers? of people? No, no, they're also uh, hardworking young, young men. I know one of them, I doubt it. I know both of them actually, but yeah, I, 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 you know what? They're, they're hardworking. They pay the rent. I'm happy to hear that. Mm Um, I'm trying to think there's perhaps nothing more honorable than owning your own home. So do that. Rescue a couple people from their mom's basement, put them in your house with you and you will, Uh, save them from a life of torment Mm -hmm. so anyway i would like to conclude this with um a shout out to uh tony for for being a good sport uh giving us plenty of knowledge on oh i missed out on something china 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 yes now what he said now what he says yes like we're going to talk about china Mm mm-hmm Totally forgot about this. You know why I went back to Bill Nye? Mm-hmm. And this is something you need to remember. He said that the China policy was something that we should follow. Like uh, their, their women's rights. Mm-hmm. You know, their women's rights to, you know, abort female babies because they're not actually like, you know, helpful. And then having, uh, well, what is it? They have so many males that they're just all crazy and they can't get brides. So they just assault people i'm not familiar with the with the problems i thought you're an china. expert on international affairs yeah uh, not on china chinese um china china not on <laughs> china's uh current issues with uh the gender ratio but no i don't think that um that you know a hard restriction like that is is the way to go especially yeah. when the um <clears throat> birth rate in you know most westernized countries is already Zero. Close to close to replacement value only. Or backwards, like in Japan. Yeah, or countries in Europe, like Italy. Italy? Yeah. Why is that? Italy. Like, why would one country in Europe be different from another? I thought they are all European. <laughs> uh, different cultural values, I suppose. Different levels of development. So is there a different replacement value in, like, Mississippi compared to Maine? Probably. That's interesting. I never thought of our... United States is a mm-hmm. bunch of sovereign states of different birth rates. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Um, so probably not a good idea to base the, I don't know, the the ethics of a policy that is created by China when it comes to human rights. So Bill Nye and that bioethicist should be ashamed. That was the point I was trying to make. I completely (laughs) forgot. I think that was the whole point of the show. But you have to listen. I don't know what thing we got to it at the end. Yeah, I don't know what minute we're on. I think we're on minute, you know, fifty or something. So, uh, thank you for listening, Uh, Tony. You have any last words? Uh, No, thanks for having me. I'm happy to happy to be on. Yeah, please subscribe. Um, It makes me feel good. Um, Peaches is busy playing with Bruce. By the way, Bruce is neutered. just so you know, we're responsible. I just wanted people to know that. Mm-hmm. That's important. Uh, Peaches, you have anything? Good night. Oh, okay. Bruce is uh, going to breathe on the uh, microphone. And have a great night, everybody. Or have a great day. I'm pretty sure you're listening to this during the day. <laughs>